So we're continuing our discussion of the partial molar quantities as they apply to the extensive property of Gibbs free energy. Um, you'll remember that the Gibbs free energy of a pure substance is actually equal to get a better pointer here. It's actually equal to its um, chemical potential, right? So the molar Gibbs free energy of a pure substance is the chemical potential. And so you can think of the item as, um, not the item, but the component in a binary mixture, a simple non-reacting mixture. And you can think of that component having a chemical potential in that mixture. And it would have that would be the same as its molar Gibbs. And so what we want to think of in this video and perhaps in this exercise is um, the mixing of, well, two gases in the example that's coming up. And we want to think of these individual components, first of all, as being unmixed. And so they have pure chemical potentials and then we mix them, and then they will have a chemical potential, of course, but it is the potential within the mixture. Okay, And you can think of A and B each having their own different chemical potential in that mixture. So um, let's get a few formulas derived that we'll use to calculate those. So again, a simple mixture, a binary mixture of unreacting species A and B. We have that dg by dna is equal to the chemical potential. So again, the change in the molar Gibbs with the um, change in the number of moles of A, keeping temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of B constant. And so this is the chemical potential of A in a mixture of A and B. And uh, hopefully you've seen the molar volume video first, lecture first. And you can see G for the whole mixture changes with composition. And the way that I've labeled composition or indicated composition here is with the number of moles of A in the mixture, which is convenient. <coughs> it's done on purpose because that way my slope is dg by dna, which is in fact the chemical potential of A inside this mixture um, for a given composition. So see where I've drawn the tangent here? And so if I dropped a perpendicular from that point, I would be somewhere here. And so that would be the slope of that tangent at that point is the chemical potential of A in a mixture uh, of composition described by this number of moles of A. And if it's that number of moles of A, and you know the total number of moles, you could compute a mole fraction and describe the composition a little bit better. But this x-axis, of course, is done on purpose as number of moles of A, because then it makes the slope very conveniently um, significant because if I get the slope of that, I have the chemical potential. So sometimes the chemical potential is increasing um, yeah, a lot more rapidly than other compositions. And again, it's because the um, magnitude or value of this partial molar quantity depends on composition. It depends on what molecules are surrounding this guy in the mixture. And that varies with composition. And so then, again, it comes down to intermolecular um, forces of attraction. OK. Um, I'm just thinking there for a moment with gases behaving 
perfectly um, are not going to be so potentially wonky because they don't have forces of attraction. But we'll see how that pans out in a moment. Right, so then G of the full mixture is equal to the number of moles of A times the chemical potential plus the number of moles of B times the chemical potential. And so you'll recognize this form of equation as being very, very similar to that of total volume where we had a partial molar volume times number of moles, partial molar volume of B times number of moles. But here, it's a partial molar Gibbs, right? Partial molar Gibbs or chemical potential. Okay, so um, does this relate to what we already know? Always a good question. Um, this is done in the textbook, uh, a little on the brief side, so I just wanted to help you make sense of it. Um, where we're going with this, we'll probably end up with the gibbs Joule equation, but okay, so we have G. G is equal to H minus TS. DG, therefore, is equal to DH minus TDS minus STD. But H is equal to U plus PV. So DH is DU plus PDV plus BDP and so on from above. But DU is TDS minus PDV. And then I bring down the four terms from above. I see if I can simplify it and I can and I end up with DG being equal to VDP minus SDT. So that tells me that the uh, that the Gibbs free energy is, depends on pressure and temperature. And I want to know for a pure substance, and we knew that already. But now in a mixture, I have to add a couple of terms to this, um, right? Because if I just bring back, well, I don't have to bring back, um, well, I will. <laughs> Remember what we just wrote for G? Okay. Um, so imagine then DG would be equal to, I would have a DNA and a DNB, so hold that thought. And so the way that I have to modify this for a mixture is that dg is not only equal to, and that's an equal sign, this doesn't look like one, it's not only equal to vdp minus sdt, but I also have to add the, its dependence on composition. And so, before you get a little nervous that this is now growing, Remind, I remind you that, um, okay, so dG is dependent on temperature, pressure, and number of moles of A and B, but under a constant temperature and pressure, if pressure is not changing, so dP is zero, and dT is zero, then you see how I'm coming back to dG is equal to mu A dNA plus mu B dNB at a constant temperature and pressure. So it does relate to what we already know and doesn't conflict. So um, I can bring that down and regenerate again dg by dna, constant temperature and pressure in number moles of b is the chemical potential of A in a mixture of A and B. dg by dnb at constant temperature pressure in number moles of A is the chemical potential of B in a mixture of A and B. Okay? So the chemical potential is written in terms of Gibbs free energy. Now, that's only the case when it's constant temperature and pressure. If I have a different set of conditions, and let me just show you one instance here. Um, can I write the chemical potential in terms of internal energy? And you can, except it would be a different set of uh, constant conditions. So remember, we can do this, right? You can do this. du is equal to TDS minus PDV. You would start with u being equal to q plus w, and then du is equal to dq plus dw, but dq is 
um, TDS and DW is minus PDV, so there you have it. Um, but for a mixture of A and B, I have to modify my DU is not only equal to TDS minus PDV plus, it is equal to plus um, chem potential DNA plus chem potential B DNB. And then for constant conditions of not constant temperature and pressure this time, but constant entropy and volume, those terms each go to zero, and I'm left with now chemical potential. With look, this side looks very familiar, and it was equal to dg, but it was only equal to dg when temperature and pressure are constant. So when volume and entropy are constant, it's actually equal to du. So now I have a slightly different expression for a constant volume and entropy condition the chemical potential of A is actually equal to du instead of dg, du by dna at constant S, V, and N, B. The chemical potential of B in that mixture at a constant number of moles of A and entropy and volume constant is du by dnB. Okay, so again we had these fundamental equations that we had fun deriving a while ago and they're modified slightly now for the mixture, but then when I make those conditions valid, they're actually just equal to the part that I've added on for the mixture. And I can see how chemical potential is written now in terms of another extensive property when I have other things that are constant. And so you bet if I can do that for du, I can do that for um, enthalpy, dh. So let's have a look. For enthalpy, H is U plus PV, so DH is DU plus and so on and so on, right? And we bring it down to TDS plus VDP, and we're good at this. But for a binary mixture of A and B, DH is not only equal to TDS plus VDP, but equal to, again, the same expression, mu A DNA, mu B DNB. And so under the conditions of constant, you know I'm going to choose these because these are the ones that I want to go to zero. So under constant conditions of entropy and pressure, that guy goes to zero, that guy goes to zero, and I'm left with dH. Now, remember we started with dG, a constant temperature and pressure, and then this was equal to du um, under constant entropy and volume, and now under constant entropy and pressure, it becomes dH but this side has remained the same the whole time. And that allows me to tell you that chemical potential now is actually equal to dH by DNA when I have entropy and pressure constant, as well as the number of moles of B. And the chemical potential of B in a mixture of A and B is actually equal to the change in en enthalpy over DNB while well, keeping S and P constant. And so that, um, remember we had a diagram earlier for Gibbs with Na, but that was for constant temperature and pressure. And on the last sheet of paper, we could have drawn one for U with Na, looking similar like this, but that would have been for a constant entropy and volume. And this one is valid. It's valid insofar as the slope is equal to the chemical potential when I have entropy and pressure constant. So if you like, you can try your own version of this because there's only one left over, and that's Helmholtz. So you would write A is equal to, and it's U minus TS. Derive an expression then for DA in, in terms of those two terms that we are used to. Modify that to be valid description for a binary simple mixture, and so you would be adding your mu A DNA plus mu B DNB, and then enforcing a constant temperature and volume so that two terms would go to zero, and you're just left with the chemical potential terms. Um, define chemical potential now in terms of Helmholtz, 
So your chem as you do this derivation, you should end up with mu A as being equal to dA by dNA while keeping TV and NB constant. And then likewise for B. So that a, a plot of A versus NB, um, the slope of a tangent at any point is going to be equal to the chemical potential because we've just shown that it's equal to dA by dNB at constant temperature and volume. All right. Um, let's stop there and then we'll do um, mixing of gas problem actually on the next one.